So let's start with the transformer I have here. This is a variable transformer. It's plugged into a 120 volt outlet and I can take that 120 volts with this and turn it to whatever I want between zero and 130 volts. So if I wanted this to be a 24 volt transformer, I can bring it up to 24 volts and run a low voltage control circuit off of this, for example. So we can play with this voltage rating on the entire circuit to experiment and see what's actually gonna to happen to current as we do this. So I have a multimeter here hooked up to this circuit and when I increase the voltage, you will see the current start to increase along with it. So our current is being measured in amps and it is telling us at what pace the electrons are flowing through this circuit. So you can see as I increase the voltage, the voltage is providing more push for those electrons and those electrons are now flowing faster and faster through this circuit. Likewise, if I bring this voltage down, our current will drop down with it. So there's a direct relationship between voltage and current. If voltage goes up, current goes up. If voltage goes down, the current goes down. Now the water analogy is very popular because we do see a lot of similarities. I have a knob here just like I have on top of my transformer that allows me to adjust the speed of the pump as I turn it up and down. So naturally as I turn the pump speed up, the pump generates more pressure to push more water through the line. And as I turn the pump speed down, the pressure drops off and less water is now flowing. Now the problem with voltage is that it just doesn't know when to stop. It will keep pushing current until it overrides the abilities of the circuit and the components in the system. So this is when we have blown fuses, trip breakers, melting wires, electrical fires, all kinds of electrical Armageddon happens. So we need to introduce a third element that helps regulate all this. And this is where resistance comes into play. Now here we are back at our water model here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this pump on and start pushing water through this piping here. And as you can see, I have a valve that's partially closed. Now this valve represents resistance. It's pushing back against the pump's efforts to push water through it, obviously. And we can see we have a nice steady flow on our water meter here. Now, as I add more resistance, we can see the flow start to slow down even though the pump is still running at the same speed. What I can do here is I can overcome this resistance by just increasing the speed of the pump and that will bring my flow rate right back up again to where it was before, even with the resistance not changing. Now everything we just did on the water model, we can replicate here on this circuit. You can see I have 120 volts being put out by my transformer. I have my current reading here in amps, 0.122. And this is a resistor box. I can add resistance to this circuit, um, but right now everything's set to zero. And as you can see, I have a little fan there spinning. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add 100 ohms of resistance on this circuit just like I closed down on the valve on our pump. And you can see our current is now dropping down as a result. So even though our voltage output is still 120 volts, we see a drop in our current with the added resistance on this box and our fan slowed down a little bit as a result. Now, just like in our water analogy, I can overcome that resistance by increasing the voltage and pushing back. And we will see that our current will return back to where it was before and our fan speed will resume full power. Now the problem with this is that even though it kind of fixed the problem, I'm now using more energy to do the same amount of work. So we now have a very inefficient system. So how do we apply what we just learned here and make practical use of it? How do we use it to start diagnosing problems? So what I did here is I set everything back to where it was. We have no resistance on the box. We're reading our amperage here and you can see I have another multimeter here set up to take a voltage reading directly off the motor itself. So we have our line voltage coming in off the transformer and we have our voltage reading off the motor itself. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add 100 ohms of resistance on this box here. And as you see, just like before, our current starts to drop off 
but take a look at our voltage reading on the motor. It's currently reading 110 volts, but we still have 120 volts coming in off our line. Now this is called a voltage drop. We're losing 10 volts to the resistance that we added to this circuit. If I add another 100 ohms and bring it up to 200 ohms, you can see as expected, our resistance is pushing back on our current and that's dropping down. And we just lost about another 10 volts on our motor here. So now we have a 20 volt drop, yet we still have 120 volts coming in our line. So where's that voltage going? That voltage is being converted directly to heat by the resistance. Now what does this tell us about diagnosing problems? When you understand the relationship between voltage and resistance and its effect on current, what you can do is you can take a voltage reading on your component and that reading can tell you whether you have a power supply problem or a resistance problem somewhere in the circuit. So as we can see here, uh, we definitely have a resistance problem because our power supply is where it should be coming in. So you have to have both readings to make sense of this. Now a voltage drop doesn't necessarily mean it's happening at the component you're actually testing. It could happen prior to that. So if I were to take my multimeter measuring voltage and I were to measure voltage going back prior to the motor which is where this resistor box is in the circuit right so the the power is coming into my resistor box then it's going to the motor so if I come back and I test on one side of this resistance box my multimeter is now reading 120 volts, so that's line voltage. So I know up to this point my voltage is good, but if I test on the other side of this box, I now see that's where I'm losing my voltage. I'm only reading 101 volts on my meter. So I'm losing 19, 20 volts at this box, and now I've identified the problem. This is my resistance in the circuit that's causing my motor not to run properly. And so by understanding this relationship, understanding the voltage drop, we can systematically go backwards through the system to identify where this drop is actually occurring, uh, and then we can identify what that problem is. So uh, this resistor box, for example, it could have been a corroded or loose wire connection. It could have been a wire nut that came loose, uh, it could be anything. Now in this case, if I measured on the other side of this box and I was still getting my line voltage, well now I know the resistance is in the motor itself.